I did say with variety, right? Hello everyone, this is Modeling with Variety, and today we're taking a look at this. The figurized bust Daya Kurosawa and Mari Ohara from the Love Live franchise. To see if Bandai should really take another shot at this line of model kits. Let's take a look. Let's first start with Mari. Opening the box you'll see bags of runners and your manual, which is not your usual pamphlet style manual, but a sort of folded poster like what Minimum Factory does, but without the poster aspect. What is curious about these parts is that Bandai molded the hair detail so sharp that you could actually hurt yourself while building these up. Which is strange because Bandai doesn't really do this unless on bigger skilled gunpla such as MGRPG and even then, it is still a rarity. It looks like something Kotobukiya would mold to be honest. The layered injection molding system used on the eyes looking very nice, but what's not very nice is that big, big hulking sticker sheet. Let's move on to Daya. Inside the box you'll see the same stuff with Mari. Bags of runners, standing instruction manual, very sharp molding on the hair, layered injection looking pretty nice, and the not so nice sticker sheet. Let's get them built up and see how they look. First thing out of the way, they don't look as cursed as they do on the box. Not gonna lie there. Especially Daya. Since her hair color is black, it really stands out with her light skin color. Mari is also fine but her blonde hair coupled with her blonde eyebrows just makes it blend with her forehead which makes her kind of cursed looking. Like how it is on the box. There isn't much to comment about considering the both of them and well every model that I tried on this line had almost the same experience. They went together well enough that there's little to no hiccups. The stickers are atrocious, absolutely everywhere on the model. There is no sticker on them that works well. But considering that this is a relatively cheap model with sharp molding on the hair and even the layer injection molding system being implemented on them, it is quite understandable. And the nub placement though kind of bad, it is not really a problem with a little care put into the building process. What I want to do though is compare them with these. The EXQ line of figures that Ban Presto makes. The reason being that these figures aren't really that far priced from these model kits. These figures actually are priced at 1k yen, about $10 per figure. And the figurized busts are priced at around 1,800 yen or about $18 originally, but I got them for like one third of that price. So looking at them side by side, it's uh, pretty darn close. And the deal's actually almost the same. So now it really depends on you and what you want to get. Do you want a model kit versions of these characters to work on? Or do you want something that when bought, it already looks nice-ish when put on the shelf? You could work on the figure like one of these figurized busts, but considering how the figure is put together, it isn't going to be as nice of an experience disassembling it when compared to the figurized. Also, this is in my opinion the best way to get into scale figure modeling since nowadays, well, since ever, they're fairly cheap and has relatively nice molding. So when comparing to your typical scale figure or scale resin figure, which is like, oh boy, oh boy. Yeah, it really is a good entry, but that's what I think. How about you? What do you think? Leave your comments down below. Thank you for watching.